from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of VMworld 2020, brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's coverage of VMworld 2020 virtual. This is theCUBE virtual. I'm John Furrier, your host, covering all the action for VMworld, not in person this year, it's virtual. So we're bringing you the virtual interviews remotely. We've got two great guests here. Mark Lohmeyer, Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Cloud Services Business Unit at VMware. And David Brown is the Vice President for EC2 at AWS, Amazon Web Services. Both CUBE alumni. Great to see you guys uh, remotely. Thanks for coming on. Great to be back. Great to be here too. So at first, uh, VMworld's not face-to-face. -face. Usually it's a great event. Reinvent's also going to be virtual. Again, it's, you know, we're going to get the content out there, but people still got to know the news and got to know what's going on. Um, I remember three years ago, I interviewed Pat Gelsinger and Andy Jassy in San Francisco on the big announcement of AWS and VMware, uh, VMware on AWS. Uh, really since then, what a great partnership. Um, not only has VMware cleaned up their clarity around cloud, but the business performance mark has been phenomenal. Congratulations. All the data that we're reporting shows customers are leaning into it heavily, great adoption and super happy success. AWS, congratulations as well for a great partnership. Mark, three years, uh, but it's an industry defining partnership. A lot of people were skeptical. We are on the right side of history. I got to say, we called it. <laughs> That's right. Give That's us an right. update. Yeah, no, look, we're super excited. Like you said, it's the third year anniversary of, uh, of this uh, game-changing partnership. And uh, look, the relationship could not be stronger, right? Across uh, engineering, the product teams, the go-to-market teams, uh, really getting stronger and deeper every day. And at the end of the day, you know, of course what it's about is uh, innovating on behalf of our customers, delivering compelling new capabilities that allow them to uh, migrate and modernize and uh, you know, look, we're just really pleased uh, with, with the partnership, right? And I think as a result of that depth of joint engineering, uh, building and delivering the service together, you know, we're proud to be able to say that AWS is our preferred public cloud partner for, for vSphere-based workloads. You know, I remember at the time, um, David, talking to Terry Wise on AWS side and Andy, of course, um, and Ragu, the architect for this uh, vision of the partnership. And this changed how VMware has been doing partnerships. Uh, and I want to talk about that because I think that's a great use case of what I call the new cloud native reality that everyone's living in. But before we get there, Mark, there's some news tied around AWS and VMware. Could you take a minute to uh, uh, share the news around uh, what's going on with VMworld, Tenzu, you got Connect, you got all kinds of enhancements. Give us the update on the news. Yeah, sure. So, you know, uh, we continue to listen closely to our customers and, uh, continue to deliver them new value, new capabilities. And um, a few things we're going to highlight uh, at VMworld. Uh, the first is we've heard from many customers, you know, they love the ability to uh, rapidly migrate their vSphere-based workloads to the AWS cloud. And VMC on AWS is really a game changer from that perspective. Um, and so that continues to be a really, really compelling use case for many customers. Uh, but what they've also said to us is, look, it's not just about migrating to the cloud, it's also about migrating and then modernizing. And so together with AWS, we um, have really brought together the richest set of tools for our customers to enable them to modernize those applications. Of course, as we've talked about before, customers have access to the full uh, rich set of AWS services. Um, and then within VMware Cloud and AWS, we're now announcing support for native Kubernetes capabilities within VMware Cloud and AWS, uh, taking advantage of the VMware uh, Tanzu Kubernetes Grid service. So we're really excited about bringing that, uh, that service in particular to our joint customers. And then um, the other kind of key innovation um, that we're going to be talking about is uh, around networking, right? And uh, as our customer environments get uh, larger and larger, and they're looking to create uh, fairly sophisticated topologies between their on-prem data center, between uh, multiple VMC and AWS instances, and between um, perhaps multiple uh, native AWS VPCs, um, we've done a lot of work together um, to really simplify the way that customers can connect all of those um, environments together. Um, and uh, maybe Dave wants to uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, Dave, chime in. What's, what's the news on your end too? What's the relationship and, and update from the Amazon side for uh, VMworld? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the partnership has just been incredible working with VMware, right? Right, right from uh, four years ago, when we first started with the idea of what could AWS and VMware do together? Um, I think we've seen really deep uh, engineering engagement, um, but also leadership engagement and, and support from leadership on both sides, which has really set 
set us up for the partnership that we have today, which has been phenomenal. Um, you know, Mark was just talking about the the Transit Connect feature that VMware is adopting, and, and what you're really seeing there is years of innovation on the networking side of EC2, where we've really understood deeply what customers need from a network, um, understood the fact that they're trying to recreate some of those large network topologies that they're doing on-premise, um, and then trying to support them in a cloud way or supporting them in a cloud, cloud-like way. And so, you know, Transit Gateway is the service under the hood that we released um, about two years ago at reInvent. And so what we've been doing with VMware is working out what does Transit Gateway mean uh, within the VMware environment? And so really bringing customers that that rich connectivity that they need, you know, whether it's between their VPCs, b- between their VMware environments, even back to on-prem or between regions. Um, and so that's what Transit Connect now and VMware is going to be utilizing and, and bringing to customers. So we're pretty excited about, um, you know, what that means for our end customer. You know, one of the trends I see coming out of all the announcements, David, I want to get your thoughts on it because we talked briefly a few months ago uh, for your summit virtual, uh, but I want you to kind of put it in context of VMware because you're seeing virtualization of physical things. You know, NICs with Project Monterey and all the stuff with, with NVIDIA and software. EC2, you guys have seen this vision, not just compute, but you talk about networking. You know, you have the really the first time this convergence of physical and software virtual. And this is not new to you guys. I know this is the premise of Amazon Cloud. First you have the building blocks, S3 and EC2, but now a slew of other services. But this trend is going to continue, certainly with COVID and work at home, there's more need for more compute, more different kinds of compute. You got the physical layer from the network, other devices. This isn't going to go away. I mean, I just did some interviews about Space Force and they're talking about software defined um, devices. You can't do break fix in space. So, you know, all yeah. this is going to be done with software and this idea of the physical virtual coming together. I mean, I know I love the virtual cube. We're not in person, I wish we were, but yeah. this virtualization trend around the hardware, this is this is, not, this is all about the EC, what EC's been doing for years. How does that relate well, to true. the VMware yeah. customer? So, I mean, I think the VMware customers experienced virtualization, right? Uh, long before EC2 was around as well, when VMware back in the day with VMware Workstation, uh, it's, it's kind of central to what they've been able to do. Uh, you know, being able to virtualize environments, um, being able to stand up environments really, really quickly on a, on a physical machine is, is what VMware has brought for the customer. EC2 started in a similar place. Uh, you know, the, the strength of EC2 has been able to get a VM in a, in a few minutes. Um, and, you know, we've just grown the what we can support in a virtualized world. So you think about where we started with very simple machines, um, you know, today is supporting things like HPC and, and advanced, you know, accelerators like GPUs and uh, FPGAs. And so we've really pushed the virtual world. Uh, interestingly enough, you know, VMware was obviously doing the same thing with their hypervisor and, you know, many, many happy customers there. The real interesting thing is it was through the innovation uh, that we were doing on the EC2 side to work out how do we really get the most out of virtualization, right? Historically, virtualization has been plagued with things like jitter and, you know, just performance. You couldn't really get the network performance there or the CPU would stall. And those are sort of the old issues. The cloud and the innovation we've been doing has largely gotten rid of those. And so it's actually almost the... The, re- the ability to remove the virtualization from EC2, um, that really was the, the ingredient that enabled us to allow VMware to run on us. And so that's where it all started back in late 2016, when we started to work with the VMware team saying, you know, we've actually built the ability through our Nitro system um, to not require our virtualization layer. And then we could replace that virtualization with a VMware virtualization layer. And that that set us up for what we have today, right? That, that made VMware on AWS a reality. That gave the VMware customer you know, the, the full VMware virtualization support, which is what their applications have been built for, that's what they've really come to, to, to love. They don't want to change all of that when they move to the cloud. And so being able to move those workloads to the cloud for VMware, you know, on, on AWS and, and get the benefit of great hardware design together with the great hypervisor from VMware. Um, obviously it's all virtual at the end of the day with a lot of innovation that went into making that happen. Mark, I want to get your thoughts on this because I remember when we, again, years ago when we covered it, we, again, on the right side of history of the prediction, we said it's going to be a great thing uh, for AWS and VMware. Some of the other commentary was, at that time was, oh my God, VMware's lost, it capitulated, Amazon's going to suck all the thousands and thousands of VMware customers into the cloud and they're going to eat them up and VMware's going to be sitting there, uh, you know, on the side of the road. Okay, not the case. Your business performance has been exceptional Okay, the customers have been resonating with their offering. It's been a win-win. Can you talk about the business momentum and how this continues to go? Because again, everyone got it wrong on that side. This has been exactly how you guys had teed it up. I mean, a little bit here and then not exactly, but from a business perspective, it hit the mark. What's your thoughts? 
Yeah, no, look, we, we've been uh, incredibly pleased at uh, the customer adoption that we've seen for the service. Um, in fact, uh, you know, the total workload count on the service uh, has increased uh, by over 140% versus this time last year, right? So um, clearly customers are adopting the service uh, at a large scale and, and growing rapidly. But I think if you sort of peel, back, peel that back a little bit, right, it's, it's really driven by um, the use cases and the value that we're able to deliver to customers. Right. And so if you're a customer that's got a vSphere based workload in your own data center and you want to move to the AWS cloud, you know, the fastest, lowest cost, lowest risk way to move that workload is using VMware Cloud on AWS. Right. And so it's that use case that's powering a lot of that consumption. Uh, another interesting use case that's uh, that's driving a lot of demand and that we continue to invest and expand is disaster recovery. Right, so there's some customers that still want to run some workloads in their own data centers, but they'd like to be able to leverage the public cloud as a target for disaster recovery. And if you think about it, uh, you're talking about you know cloud delivered as a service and the elasticity and all of those benefits. Those really play out strongly in the DR use case where you only really want to spin up that capacity in the scenario where you actually need it, right? In the, in the case of an actual disaster. And so um, VMware recently acquired a company uh, called Datrium. And uh, we're using that technology to enable a new service we call VMware Cloud DR uh, on top of the VMC on AWS uh, offering. And this is a really powerful capability because it allows our customers to significantly reduce the cost of disaster recovery by taking advantage of AWS's low cost S3 storage combined with some unique capabilities um, in the Datrium service that allow us to store the VMDKs very cost effectively on that S3 storage. And then in the case of a disaster, we can spin up those hosts. You know, Dave talked about the uh, the Nitro host, right? We can spin up those bare metal hosts with the VMware hypervisor on it and uh, automatically restart those workloads without requiring any VM conversion because, of course, it's all, all vSphere-based, right? So, you know, it's uh, we're really pleased with the business performance, um, but, you know, sort of behind that, of course, it's the value that we can deliver to our joint customers together. You know, the integration thing is interesting. And again, I think the success is that there's a partnership at the highest levels and trickles down into engineering. David, talk about what's next uh, for AWS because, you know, after cloud, you've got cloud native. The integrations are going to be needed across more partners and more customers, um, but they don't want to do the heavy lifting, right? So, so if I'm a customer, I'm like, hey, you know what? I just want more cloud scale. I want more cloud capabilities, but I don't want to do all this integration. How does, how does yeah, Amazon view that conversation? Because again, that's one of the things that every interview, every reinvent, every time I talk to Andy and the team, it's undifferentiated heavy lifting. What are customers asking for, for from, from uh, you guys, uh, VMware customers? And, and what's, the, what's your thoughts yeah. on this? What are you guys thinking about right now? Absolutely. I think Mark hit, hit on a couple of key points there as well, right? The customer use case of I have a workload today that I run in my data center or running a colo facility, whatever it might be, and I've run it for many years. Um, in many cases, we're working with customers in industries like healthcare and finance, uh, you know, where they've actually had these, these applications qualified or certified um, to actually run on that hardware. And so, you know, requiring them to move to a different hypervisor is, is obviously a really big lift and, and may slow down the ultimate migration to the cloud. Um, and so having VMware uh, cloud on AWS and the ability to say to those customers, you know, just bring your application and your workload and, and honestly the benefit of the, the entire ecosystem that VMware provides and come and enjoy that on AWS and, and burst into AWS. Um, and so that's just been enormously um, you know, beneficial for our end customer, for AWS and for VMware. And I think that's the thing that really makes the partnership uh, incredibly strong. And, and from there, you know, these customers can pivot. And so one of the things that we've been doing together with VMware is ongoing innovation, right? So we recently just launched um, support for our i3EN uh, storage instance type, which offers up to 50% discount in storage per gig um, with VMware. And uh, it, there's a lot that went into that behind the scenes to make sure that that instance type is perfectly tuned for what VMware needed for their end customer. And we're very excited to get that out there. And know many, many customers are excited about the benefit that that brings to them, right? So they're getting all the benefit of AWS innovation um, while they keep the benefits that they've been enjoying on the VMware side. Um, and you know, this speaks to the largest sort of approach that AWS has taken in, in several industries uh, or across several industries, right? VMware I think is, is probably the best example of that. But if you look at many other areas like our networking products, customers will often come to us and say, you know, I love using 
a certain type of load balancer. Oh, I love using this firewall, um, you know, within my environment. And, and we have great partnerships with all those companies to say, if your customer or our joint customer wants to use whatever appliance, whatever application, uh, you know, we have a full marketplace full of thousands of applications that are all certified to run on us. We want to make sure we can meet those customers where they are and simplify that progression story for them as much as we can. All right, so I got to put you guys on the spot. Mark, we'll start with you, but you can't give the same answer um, to the same question. The question is, what are the customers most happy with with the partnership from a feature perspective? What's the one, uh, what, what would you say, Mark, um, is the big aha, this really is amazing. I'm so happy because of this feature capability. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a little bit back to the discussion we we're having before, but I think, you know, the, the killer use case really for the service today is that cloud migration use case I was talking about before. And if you think about what it might've taken them previously, right? Uh, you know, expensive, time consuming, um, you know, uh, it requires changes to their environment in some cases with with VMware Cloud and AWS, we can take a cloud migration that would previously been taken them perhaps years, millions or tens of millions of dollars, and we can shrink that down to literally months, right? We have some customers like uh, MIT that migrated hundreds of applications literally over a weekend, right? And um, we're able to do that because it's the same core enterprise class of VMware capabilities that the customers already optimized their application to run on in their own data centers that now we've enabled on AWS as a cloud service. So that, that cloud migration use case kind of combined with the fact that we're, um, that we're delivering it to them as a service in the AWS cloud, I think is uh, you know, one, of the, one of the use cases that a lot of customers find extremely attractive. All right, David, your turn. From an AWS perspective, what are people happy with you for on this partnership? What, are, what praises are you getting sung your way uh, when someone says, hey man, this partnership's been great. Amazon really is awesome for this. What would you say to that? So, I, you know, Mark spoke about the migration. Uh, I was going to choose sort of, you know, once they're in AWS, um, the, the benefits of the cloud breaks, right? So the ability to scale on demand. And I think one of the great things about VMware Cloud and AWS that, that VMware did is they already built it as a cloud native service. And so, you know, the customers are able to provision additional capacity very easily. Um, we have that capacity available on AWS. And so they're able to meet any sort of unexpected demand or scale. Um, and then together with the breadth of services that we have on AWS as well, you know, you and we we thought very carefully about how a VMware customer would want to consume those, and to make sure that the the whole system set up to allow that to happen. And so allowing them to to broaden what they're using over time as their engineers and and teams find other services that allow them to innovate faster and you know, build more interesting applications. So that it integrates incredibly well um, between AWS and VMware, and customers benefit from that. I want to ask you guys more on the industry side um, to comment on cloud native, um, mainly because one, we cover it, and two, it's kind of an important trend. Um, recently, Snowflake went public. It's the largest IPO in the history of the of Wall Street, and it's an enterprise company. <laughs> okay, um, and I was using that as an example because actually VMware was the second most popular uh, IPO. Uh, happens to be another enterprise company. If, and, and I was commenting on this and I want to get your, your, your reaction to it. And that is, is that if you look at the mega trend that's going on now of all the things people talk about, it's the cloud native that's the most interesting because this is all the value. If you look at the modern applications all the way down to the networking, everything in between, it's all about cloud native. And it's not just about cloud, public cloud. It's not about, it's an operating model. We, you know, we talk about that. But cloud native is the big wave that people are on. And if you're on it, you're modern. This is not just, you know, hand waving. It's legit. I mean, you're seeing benefits of it. You're seeing speed, time to value, all the things that people talk about at the events. Could you guys comment on why cloud native is so important today and why customers and developers should be really thinking through what that is for them? Um, David, we'll start with you. Yeah, absolutely. So, so for us, cloud native really means, you know, have you built your application in a way um, that takes advantage of, of the benefits of the cloud? And so are you able to scale your application horizontally? Are you able to you know, build in a way that's redundant across multiple data centers? Are you able to utilize services that are provided by you know, AWS or the cloud provider to, to not have your teams build that? And so what it ultimately means is you're able to spend more time uh, focused on, on building stuff that really matters you know, for, for your application. So you mentioned Snowflake, um, you know, they're a, a great AWS customer, we work very closely with them, and, and, and they're able to you know, have us run a lot of the infrastructure, all the infrastructure for them in the cloud, and they can really focus on building an absolutely incredible data warehousing solution for their end customer. And um, we innovate very closely um, with them. 
And so that's really what it means. Um, you know, and I think organizations that have gotten themselves there um, really get a lot of benefit. They're able to innovate faster. They're able to um, deliver more to the end customer. You know, we spend a lot of time with companies that you, you wouldn't say are cloud native today. And uh, as a cloud provider, um, as, as exciting as it is to support the cloud native customer, it's also incredibly important that we find a way to support the company that's on a journey um, towards adopting the cloud, right? They've got a long history. Maybe they've been around for many, many, many years. Um, and they've got a large application stack that they need to move. And so that's where our migration programs really support customers who need to bring non-cloud native applications. And then we're able to work with them over time um, to make them you know, more cloud native and get a lot of those benefits. And so it's a journey that I think many of companies are on. Some started there and some have a way to get there. It definitely has a lot of benefits. Isn't Snowflake really an, just an example of value creation? I mean, it's not about that they're on Amazon, you're happy about that, but it shows that you don't have to go a certain way. If you create value, speed, scale, speaks for itself. So that's just, that could be an enterprise, that could be a startup, that could be the cube, it could be anybody, right? I mean, yeah. don't you see it that way? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, they, they, they had a great use case, they had a customer need. It's in a really interesting area, obviously dealing with big data. And so I think, you know, there's, there's really no limit there. Mark, you guys are in the modern app and this is what you're hearing. It's one of the things that people are going to want to come out of COVID. They're going to want to have a growth strategy, cloud native. Why is it important? And what, what's your take on this? What's your reaction to the cloud native being the big wave? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Dave said it, uh, you know, very well. I mean, um, you know, when I talk to customers, you know, regardless of where they are in that journey, they all have some form of digital transformation agenda, right? And at the end of the day, they want to deliver better services to their end customers because they know that's what different is going to differentiate them, or they want to better empower their employees, right? And as part of trying to deliver that value to their customers, their employees. You know, uh, they want to focus their time and energy on the things that really differentiate them, right? And uh, you know, for many of them, that mean, that means you know they don't want to have to worry about you know upgrading some infrastructure software, right? That's not that's not delivering value to their to their customers. And so, you know, I think as they go down that journey, you know, we're really pleased uh, to be able to partner with AWS to be able to create these uh, you know these powerful platforms together between VMware and AWS that really deliver a lot of value to customers and allow them to focus on what's important to their business, right? And, you know, by bringing together those enterprise class VMware capabilities that hundreds of thousands of customers trust for their most mission critical workloads, combining that with, um, as Dave talked about, the flexibility, the agility, the scalability of the AWS cloud, and then sort of, uh, you know, not just those existing workloads, but also enabling a rich set of uh, new services those customers can take advantage of to modernize, you know, whether it's VMware services, like I talked about before with uh, our native Kubernetes capability built in to, uh, to VMC, or whether it's the, you know, hundreds and growing portfolio of AWS services, you know, giving them all, giving them the power of that full toolkit as a service yeah. so they can focus on building value on top. I mean, that's, I think really the winning equation, which would, and it's why so many customers are moving down that path together with us. Well, congratulations, I want to say to you, because Dave Vellante has been digging into the buyer behavior data, looking at the, what the budget projections are going to be, and VMware on AWS has been strongly performing, and uh, it's doing really well, congratulations. And David, great to have you back on, and you got reInvent less than 60 days away. Can you give us a little te te teaser and taste of what you got going on. I know you can't reveal, but what kind of generally are we going to be seeing at reInvent uh, with EC2 and your team? Absolutely, reInvent's a little different this year. It's it's obviously virtual. Uh, and so we're pretty excited about that. We think uh, it'll bring a new flavor. And so there's a lot of planning going on, both in terms of product delivery. Uh, it's always, a, it's always a, a great time of year for us as we finish up a lot of our big releases aimed at reInvent. And then obviously working on content and presentations. And so, you know, a lot of interesting stuff for customers to think about. As they so you're not revealing about. anything. You just, you know, okay, you're going to have some <laughs> announcements, I'm sure, EC2, got some big announcements. Exactly. Uh, hide, hide in the ball, as they say. David Brown, Vice President of EC2 at Amazon Web Services, AWS, Mark Lohmeyer, SVP and GM at Cloud Search, the business unit at VMware. Um, great partnership, congratulations. We'll be following it. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We're here in Palo Alto, remote for theCUBE virtual for VMworld. 2020 virtual, couldn't be face-to-face. -face. We'll do our best with our Cube virtual to get you the content. Thanks for watching.